Welcome to the series of introductory videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is the grooving operation. So the grooving operation basically is very similar to some of the other turning toolpaths you'll see in this introductory series, except here we're actually using it only for grooves or, or basically U-shape or closed off kind of features like that. So essentially just grooves or, or, or slots. Um, so let's take a look at how we can get to that operation. So you can go to your solid cam turning tab, you can click on grooving or angled grooving, and you can also come over here and right click on your last toolpath, add turning operation, and then you can go to grooving or angled grooving. Um, so basically uh, you're adding it at the, at the end of the last toolpath only because every one of the turning toolpaths is a stock recognition toolpath. So it needs to see the stock you're looking to remove. If you've added the toolpath out of order, all you gotta do is just click save, so you can add it to the tree, and then you can shuffle it after and, and put it in the proper position. Uh, so in terms of geometry selection, it's very similar to the other turning toolpaths. To see how the geometry selection can be done uh, with certain details, certain parameters, I would refer you to the turning operation video to see how the different uh, parts of that window work. I'm just gonna go through and just grab my geometry real quick here. So. After already facing and turning this part, you can see there's only a, that much amount of material in that groove. <clears throat> so I'm looking to just go from here, and then with my up to entity, I'm looking to go to there. So I'm just gonna grab all of that. Click the green check mark, click the green check mark. Now, that geometry I just selected includes a face that's already been turned, or at least partially turned because of that, that original operation. So I can go to modify geometry, and if I like, I don't have to waste time facing that. Uh, I mean, I might want to just to make sure that that's a nice finished face with my grooving tool. But if I want to trim this a little bit, I actually can go to end extension. And instead of using auto extend, I can just leave it as the end extension, highlight that value, and then just trim or extend it wherever I like. In this case, I'd like to trim it to just past that fillet. So you can see the highlight that represents my, my selected geometry. I've actually trimmed it by, in this case, 80 thou from the end of that one chain so that I'm only facing or turning to that point there. So I'm actually just gonna groove just that little bit there um, and then uh, we'll, we'll just see how that toolpath looks. I'm gonna click the green check mark to accept my geometry. We'll go to tool. And again, in the, in the tool section, all I'm gonna do is just click select and then select my tool from my active tool library. To see how to create turning tools, I refer you to the Create Turning Tools video in this introductory series. So I'll just grab my grooving tool, like so. Okay, and you can check the mounting by checking that icon there, seeing that it's mounted correctly, so we're good there. Levels, levels is just the safety distance away from the updated stock. So in this case, it's gonna be this distance away from the updated stock, the target, anything nearby where I don't wanna collide whenever I reposition the tool. It's in the technology section that you'll see the main parameters of this toolpath. In this case, we can do outside grooving, inside grooving, front or back grooving. So inside or outside grooving, that's gonna be driven by the geometry that I selected. But for whatever reason, if I chose geometry that looks like it's going like that, but it is actually on the inside, I can always switch the mode to the internal. Um, but the geometry usually will inform SolidCam as to what which one you're using. So you'll see this already defaulted depending on if you're doing inside or outside grooving. Front and back grooving, um, it's, it's easier to do that uh, in the same way. Uh, you're just gonna choose whatever geometry, which direction you like to go, but your tool will need to be mounted in that direction. So always keep that in mind whenever you're, uh, you're doing that. And you can also do that with any kind of L-shaped tooling as well. It's all a matter of which direction the tool is approaching from to do the front grooving. Similar to what we've seen before, you have a roughing tab where you can add in roughing parameters. Now this being a grooving toolpath, there's some additional parameters here. So we're gonna see that you have not only a step down where you can give it a constant step down of 80 thou, or we can just do single, meaning it'll just go right down and complete the toolpath. So no step down. If there is, uh, if this groove is, it has different features in there, different levels, you can add an interme intermediate step down, which will account for any differences in the, um, in the profile, rather than just doing everything as an 80 style step. We will be stepping over across this, this uh, groove as well. So we have the 40 style groove step over as well. Cut order rows or columns. So of course this is a groove, 
I might want to actually not just do rows, but I can switch to columns, and we'll see that it actually does columns rather than rows. Direction. Because this is Groove and you want to equalize the pressure on the tool, or many other reasons, you can actually switch the direction. So side to side, basically, if I chose my chain going this direction, it will groove in that direction. If I'd like to do a zigzag, rather than just going in my rows across and then repositioning to go again, I can get it to, to do the zigzag back and forth. From middle outside, I can start grooving from the middle and working my way outside. And then there are alternating adjacent and alternating across. So different ways to groove this, this part in the case of different parameters or different materials or whatever it is you're looking for. And then rough type is smooth versus stairs. If I have a contour, for instance here, I have my, uh, my chamfer there, I can leave it at smooth, or I can do stairs where it will just do X and Y movements without following any kind of contours. That is in the roughing section. Because we're roughing, we're leaving material on the walls and the floor. By default, the grooving operation assumes that since you have a grooving insert selected, you're probably going to use it for finishing. So that's why we have the finishing already pre-selected here. And we have various modes here as well. So ISO turn method, down only, advanced down only, and stairs method. For a uh, description of each one of these, I would refer you to the turning toolpath operation video where I covered some of those as well. And then, of course, we can tell it to either finish on rest material or geometry, the entire geometry. So the rest of the material will actually account for the fact that there may be some leftover material from a previous tool, uh, and then it'll add a couple of passes before it does the actual finishing pass. If you are looking to just do the uh, geometry without any kind of semi-finishing, then you can just set that to entire geometry. Groove parameters, because we're using a grooving tool, some groove parameters need to be incorporated, and this is really just going to be a percentage of the speed and speed as we go closer to the center. So obviously, if we're defining our, our feeds and speeds um, per grooving, so we're doing inch per rev rather than RPM, and surface footage rather than RPM, um, then we'll, we'll actually want to control this a little bit more in terms of how closer it gets to the, uh, to the center. And then break edges allows me to add internal or external corners in the case of the geometry, including internal or external corners. So what we can do is we can check this box for internal corners. It will add a fillet or a chamfer if there is an internal corner. It will add a fillet or a chamfer if there's an external corner. And really all this is for is to avoid having to go back to the original design and adding these features. That being said, if there is one corner of many that you'd like to change, then it's better to do it as a design change because here, this will change all the internal corners or all the external corners. There's no way to pick and choose in this window. And then in the link section, this is your, uh, your lead in lead out, which is not entirely necessary because you have the retraction distances, you have the retreat distances. So it's already moving away from the part before it repositions. So lead in lead out, not commonly used. And the approach and retract point those are the right safety corner. Basically, from the definition of your of your home, there's a right safety corner somewhere over here. But of course, you have control over here as to where it actually could approach from. So in the case of grooving, it's possible that the groove is maybe a little more central to the part. You don't want to start here. You can do something like X first. And then you just choose somewhere on the part where you'd like to approach from. So I'm just going to grab that point there to record the X and the Z coordinate. And then what I can do is I can just shift it in Z. So rather than approaching right from there, I just wanted to get that, that X coordinate there. Let's say we grab a Z coordinate over here. So I'll, maybe I'll just get it to approach from 3.5. And then we can just use the same point for the retraction. Do the same calculate. You can see the toolpath approaches from that point there. If we take a look at that, in our simulation. So in the turning and milter module, we have a turning simulation that allows us to look at the part from this cross section. I can play through this. You can see that we had a grooving operation here where I'm doing some rows. I have my step over and then my final finishing pass. So that is the simple grooving operation. 
The angled grooving operation is not represented here, but the angle groove works in a very similar way. It's just going to read the angle of your groove from your geometry. So if we just work through this real quickly, you'll see that you really only have external or internal angled grooves, but a lot of the parameters are the same. The only difference is that from your geometry, you're coming at a specific angle and your tooling, depending on your, on your lathe or your mill turn, if it has five axis capability, then you can get it to tilt in response to your tool definition. If not, your tool needs to be mounted and defined at that angle uh, or at an angle close enough that it allows it to do the groove that you've selected. Any questions of this or anything else from Solcam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.